Hey, thanks for joining me for Kid First TV, episode number nine. I hope you're ready to go get excited to worship Jesus. Let's go. Sammy, how I are you? I need your help. Oh, really? What can I help you with? It's terrible. What? God doesn't love me anymore. What? Well, every time I play a game with my sister, she wins. And I've asked God, please let me beat her once, and he won't let me. Okay, that does she not... She wins every time. <laughs> that does not mean God doesn't love you. What well, you... of course it does, because we played dominoes, she won. We played cars, she outran mine. I absolutely raced her on my feet and she outran me. I cannot beat her. She even beat me at Candyland and I cheated. Oh, you cheated? And she still won. <laughs> Sammy, you know what? Some people are just great at doing things, you know? Could it be the fact that she's just good at playing games or she's good at running? No, I think it, what it is is God's mad at me because I haven't cleaned my room. I pray but he don't seem to be listening when I say, please let me win. Oh, but that's the wrong attitude. You don't pray like, Lord, just let me win a game. Why not? Because there's other things that are more important, but that is not, that's not how you determine whether God loves you or he cares for you, Sammy. Well, that, that makes no sense at all, because I just want to win. I know you want, and, and, well, that's part of the problem too. You just want to win, 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 win. Well, of course I do. Don't you want to win? That Nobody wants to be a loser. I'm, you're not a loser, Sammy. You sure? Because I've been losing a lot. Okay, look. Um, God's on your side, always. I don't think so, because I what? keep losing. Okay, let, you see this fence here, Sammy? You're yes. on that side. I'm on this side. How do I get on your side? Well... Because apparently you're on God's side, because you're winning. And I'm losing. No, no, listen, Sammy, here's the thing about winning, losing, and being on God's side. First of all, God's on our side. The Bible says that he never forgets who we are. He doesn't forget where we are. And he knows our name. He knows everything about us. And he loves us so much. And, and next thing you know, you're going to say, he counts the hair on my heads and he knows every one of them. Well, actually, that would be an excellent scripture to bring in. 
Well, well, okay, if, 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 if God's on my side, then why can't I win? Sammy, just because you don't win doesn't mean God doesn't love you. Think about life this way. What if something in life doesn't work out the way that you want it to? Uh, such as, let's say you don't get the car that you want. When you get older, you don't get the house that you want. You don't get the job that you want. Maybe you don't get this or get that, and you put all of, of your thoughts on what you're not getting, and all of a sudden, God doesn't love you just because you don't get what you want? Hmm. Seriously? You see, God's given us everything that we need. He well, I need to win. How about that? Sammy, it's not about winning like that. Oh. You know? You mean, you mean sometimes you gotta be a loser? No. <laughs> you know what? That might not be a bad idea. If you lose everything, the Bible says, if we choose to gain life, we have to lose it all. In other words, it's like this. Put myself last. Don't try to make myself first at everything. I want to make myself last so that Christ can rise up and be seen through my life. Because if I'm trying to be number one all the time, and I'm trying to win all the time, and I get my way all the time, then what room is there for Jesus? Oh, I get it. So in other words, sometimes it's good to be number two. Yeah, Sammy. Okay. Uh, it's, it's okay. It's okay not yeah. to win all the time. That, that's correct. Yeah. So yeah. it's okay. It's okay to be not a loser, just not necessarily the winner. Well, you'll always be a winner with Jesus. Oh. No matter what. So even if I lose, I win? That's exactly right. Isn't that huh. great? That almost makes no sense, but I think I get it. <laughs> yeah. See, here, here's how it works. Okay. So if we say that we're going to lose all to gain all, yeah. Right? You empty yourself so you can take on the fullness of Jesus. Oh! Yeah. Oh, I see. Yes. So if I have Jesus in me, it doesn't matter whether I win or lose here because I'll win in heaven. Yes, now you're getting it, Sammy. Oh. Now you're beginning to understand. But the most important thing is about whether we win with God. And the way that we win with God is that we ask Him to forgive us of our sins. And when we do, He's on our side! So you're saying if we're saved, we win no matter what? Exactly. Even if it seems like we're losing, we're really winning. Yes, now you got it. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'd still like to beat my sister sometime. Well, you have to practice on things you want to win at. But hey, you know what? I think I like your way better. Okay. Because no matter if you win or lose, you're always a winner. You're always a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Really? I'm hungry. Oh, let's good. go. Okay, let's go get some chicken. Okay. Well, I got to get off this box so I can get down off the fence. Okay. Hang on. Let right. just get... Wow! Okay. Ow! We'll learn more about this in just a minute. Sammy, okay? All right! <laughs> so what's the big idea today? Why don't you just ask? Come on, ask. Come on, a little bit louder. Come on, let me hear you. What? What is that? Okay. So the big idea today is... God is on our side. Does God really care about us? Has he forgotten about us? Well, he does care and no, he has not forgotten about us. God is on our side and he wants the best for us. So today we're gonna to talk about and learn from some of the guys in the Bible like David, Daniel, and maybe even in your life where God is on your side standing with you. So if you're ready, let's go. Reverend Ronnie coming to you, bringing some hot, fresh bread from the oven of God. Oh, I love it because it's the Word of God. Today I'm going to bring it to you. Isaiah 41 10. Isaiah 41 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. Why? Because I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my mighty, righteous right hand. That's a good word today. Oh, you want another one? Oh, I just have to have one in my pocket. Boom. Oh, like pulling a rabbit out of that. You know what? I love the Word of God because it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Like waffles in the morning when you put some cream on the top. Oh, have a little bit of bacon on the side. Oh, I'm getting myself so hungry. I want to make myself want a little, little bit more Word of the God. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, woo! Let me tell you another one. Oh, so Romans 8, 28 says this. For all things work for those. Oh, everything's going to work out for your good because you love God and you are called according to His purpose. Hey, don't worry about anything. God's on 
your side. He's looking out for you. Oh, just think about it. If God be for you, who can be against you? If God be for you, who can be against you? God be for you, who can be against you? I'm telling you, I'm bringing it. I'm about out of breath. So that's me here, Reverend Roddy. Call me Reverend. Call me Roddy. Call me Reverend Roddy. What do you do? Call me because I'm hungry. I want some more of the Word of God. Oh, yeah. Let's bring it. Keep it. Live it. Rib it. Oh, yeah. Ephesians 5, 8 and 9. Okay, my nine o'clock should be here by now. Next. Good afternoon, young Hello, man. Hello, doctor. How's it going today? Doing all right. All right, have a seat here and let's take a look at you. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, careful, there's oh. the missed seat there. Yeah. All right, I can already see something's going on. Tell me what's uh, happening for you to be in my office. I, I think my vision is off somehow, doctor. How so? I, well, when I'm driving, you see, I, traffic is coming right at me. No, oh, I see. Okay, so you're driving down the road and it looks like the traffic's coming right yeah, at you. Yeah, right at me. All right, okay, I think I've got something for that. Hold on, let's try this prescription. This okay. works sometimes. Tell me what you think about that. Ooh, I can't see a thing. All right, sounds like our job here is done. What? what? Well, I came for you. I came here so you but can But it's help. dark. It's dark. You can't see them coming right at you. <laughs> but how will I drive? Oh, let me see those. Oh. These probably won't going to help you that much. I don't think so. All right. Well, I've got something in my other pocket. Okay. It's good to have pockets. Yeah. Why don't you try these on? Ah, uh, I don't think this is working. What do you mean? Can you see better? I don't feel like myself. Mmm, oh, I get that a lot with those glasses. Here, let me have those. I think I know what's going on here. I so think, what is it? I think this is more a matter of perspective than vision. Perspective? Yeah, I don't think you're looking at things the right way. Let's think about it this way. You're driving on the right side of the road, correct? Uh-huh. All right, they're driving on their right side of the road, correct? Yeah. So as long as you're on your right side and they're on their right side, you can't go wrong, right? I guess. But you're still seeing them coming right at you, aren't you? Yeah, right at me. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's definitely a problem with perspective. Let me tell you a story. 
there was a man named Elisha, and he was mentoring another young man. And they were in the middle of a great war. All right? And this great war, they're camped out in their tent, and the young man wakes up, and he sees the armies of the enemy all around him. Chariots, and soldiers, and spears, and dust. It was just probably pretty scary for him. I would be scared. So he woke up Elijah and said, Elijah, we're in trouble. The enemy's all around us. We're surrounded. And Elisha said, son, don't you see? You need a different perspective. You need to open your eyes to the spiritual sight. And then God put his eyes open and he was able to see the whole host of God's army around him that he couldn't see before. So he didn't have to wear glasses. He did not have to wear glasses. He just had to see things in a different perspective. Uh-huh. I tell you what, once you try these on and see oh, things the right okay. way. Wow. I can see. Makes a difference, don't it? All right. Oh, I like your mustache. Oh, thank you. I think we're good here. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Doc. Yep. You have a good day. Ah, David, my boy, I have a job for you. Is it herding sheep again, Father? No, it is not. I need you to take these provisions mm -hmm. to King Saul at the battle lines. And while you're there, check on your brothers, give them my love and my blessings. Whatever you say, Father. Oh, and David, be careful and remember, God is always on your side. Yes, sir. a story about a shepherd boy who was armed with just a sling. He was staring down a giant man, a champion of the armies of the Philistine. Fear had gripped the hearts of the Israelites, so they ran to hide. No one dared to make a scene. Then David took a stone, filled his sling, and began to swing. And when he let it go, you could hear him sing. I know my God is in control. I can say everything's gonna be okay. I testify my God is on my side. There was a man named Daniel Who was just in all his ways But some wicked men threw him in the lion's den Because he prayed three times a day What seemed to be a timely step for the lion's attack Didn't work out the way they planned God shut the hungry mouths of those kitty cats. Now that's a fact. From the den, you can hear old Danny Boy sing. I know my God is in control. I can say everything's gonna be okay. I testify my God is on my side. He's gonna see me through the day. Woo! Now you may face a problem 
and you wonder just what to do. So you do your best to hold on tight to all that's right and the strength to follow through. So remember when those troubles come and the pressure's on, stand strong through the lion's roar. Be still and know that God's on your side, he'll turn the tide. By faith in the battle, you can sing along. I know my God is in control. I can say everything's gonna be okay. I testify. My God is on my side. He's gonna see me through. We all go through the fire. In the flames we find a friend. So be strong and courageous. See God come through again. I know my God is in control. I can say everything's gonna be okay. I testify. My God is on my He's gonna see me through the day. Do 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 so, mm, oh, oh, hey, I was just reading my Bible and I'm reading a pretty fascinating story. Oh man, this is, oh, wait a minute. Is this, no, this can't be, this is a well? You know where, they, where the water comes up and people go draw out of it? Well, that's a long way down there. You know, I've always heard that if you say something into the well, it will echo back to you. Uh, let me give it a try. Hello. What, did you hear that? Let me try just once more. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Four? What? What's down there? Hey! Oh. oh, hey, how are you? Hi, my name's Wormy. Oh. I'm doing fine. Well, great. My name's Kevin. I was. I hope I'm not bothering you. I was just reading my Bible, and I just happened to walk up on the, 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 the well here, and... and uh, it just seemed like a nice, peaceful place to read. Oh, it's a great place to read. Yeah, so I was uh, just reading, and uh, so is it okay if I read here? Oh, absolutely. Okay. What you reading over there? Um, well, I was reading a story about, uh, actually, it has a mention of a well in it. Um, ah, go figure. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is a story about a boy who was thrown into a well. Wow. By his brothers. What? Yes. That sounds familiar. What was this boy's name? Joseph. Joseph? Y yes. Are you messing with me? No, I'm not. Did crazy Uncle Larry put you up to this? No, I don't even know you're Larry. Oh, you're gonna, oh, I can't believe this. My great, 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 great grandfather was in the well when Joseph got thrown in. What? No. This very well. No. I kid you not. Oh, wow. So when I'm reading this story, so your great, 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 yep, yep, yep. Is in this story, that's awesome. You know what happened to Joseph after he was thrown into the well? No, because after that, it's not like my great, 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 et cetera, grandfather followed him. Yeah, yeah. What else happened to him? Well, his brothers ended up selling him to a caravan or oh uh, that's awful yeah that he sold him into slavery so then he goes into egypt he starts working uh working for a guy named potiphar in potiphar's house and so that was good he got he you know he oh, was so he like worked himself up from a slave he, not so fast but then it turned again because potiphar's wife said some things about joseph oh. that got him in big time trouble that's not good. No, but then it turned again. What? Yeah, he was put in prison. And but while he was in prison, God used him to give a dream, you know, and and, and about what uh, what Pharaoh had. And so Pharaoh made him oh put him back in the kingdom. What? Yeah. Joseph. So just, wait, so he's a slave. Yeah. 
and he works his way up. Right. And then now he's a prisoner. Right. And he gets out and yeah. he's like working for the Pharaoh. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that crazy? So he, he has, his life was kind of like a roller coaster, just up and down, up and down. And you know what? Joseph had every right, probably, we would think, to say, God, you don't know where I am. You've forgotten about me. You're not on my side. Oh. You know. We, Is that what he did? No, he did not do that. He trusted God. What? Yes, he did, even through the bad times. Whoa. And that's what we can do because God wants us to realize that he's on our side. God doesn't forget about us or forget where we are because every step that we take in life, when we're trusting him, he designs every step of life. That's pretty cool. Yes, it is. Hey, listen, Mr. Kevin, anytime you want to come back and read some more, I'd love to hear some more stories. Well, I, I, you know, this book is full of them, and maybe I can bring you one and you can read it. Oh, that would be awesome. I'll bring you the Wormy Edition. Yeah, I like reading books. Okay. They call me a bookworm sometimes. Well, well, God is on your side. Don't ever doubt that. No matter what it feels like, no matter what it looks like, God is always on your side. We'll see you next time, Wormy. All right. Bye, Mr. Right, Kevin. Bye. See ya. And we'll see you, you next time. So today's big idea, we've been talking about God is on my side. You know, God is always on our side. He's never left us nor forsaken us. The problem has been with us because we feel like he doesn't think about us, love us, or care for us. I want to demonstrate something today because nothing changes the fact that he is with us. We are the ones that change our thoughts and our perspectives whether God is truly there. Just because I don't think that God is there doesn't mean he's not there because he is. When circumstances don't go our way, when we don't feel like we are getting what we need, then sometimes we think, well, God must not care. It's not true. Here's what happens. So I have a jar full of ping pong balls. Each one of these little balls can represent some doubts, some worries, some fears. Does God really love me? Does he care for me? Does he even know that I'm here? We can fill up our minds with all kind of thoughts like that. But the true message is this. This water represents God. The more we stay in contact with him, the more we pray, the more we worship, something begins to happen. I wanna show you, because it's really about our thinking. It's about transforming the way that we think, because God is always with us. Let me prove a point. All these things fill our hearts and our minds. We feel like, like I said, God may not care. He may not even know what I'm going through. But the Word of God says that He does. And that's the truth. So um, the more of the truth that we allow to come into our life, the more it drives out the thoughts that don't need to be there. It begins to push out the fear and the doubt and the worries and the concerns that we have. As you can see, if I keep pouring, it drives out every thought, and the only thing that remains is God. We have to change our thinking. We have to see through the eyes of Jesus and know that God is always there to let our faith arise, no matter, just like Joseph, no matter how you feel or what their circumstance may look like. Joseph trusted God and he believed God was on his side and he was gonna make everything work out for his good. Romans 8, 28, we've learned that already. For God works all things out for our good, for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Let the feelings go. We're not on a roller coaster ride. Up one minute, down the next. Happy one moment, sad the next. You can't trust feelings, but you can trust faith. Trust in God, believe in God, fill yourself with Him, and drive out everything else. Until next time. Prayer is essential. Prayer is very important, especially when we need to see through the eyes of Jesus. This world, many times we can get our eyes off of Jesus and onto other things. 
but prayer keeps us focused. Today we've been talking about God is on my side and he's on your side. So I want to pray for you today. Maybe your eyes have not been seeing what needs to be seen. Just like Elisha told his servant and prayed to God, God, open his eyes that he can see. So today I want to pray for you today and ask the Lord that you can see that he's right there with you. So Father God, I thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you for every person watching, every person right now that's hearing these words. Lord, I pray that they become life and strength and hope. Lord, you are always on our side, no matter what we go through, no matter the situation or the circumstances. I pray that we're able to see that you love us and you're working every detail for our good. And I ask for strength for them to place your hand upon them and keep them safe. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining us for Kid First TV today. If you liked our program, please like, share, comment, subscribe to our channel. We would really appreciate it. Let us know what you think. We'd love to hear your comments. God bless you. Until next time.